Today I'm going to show you how to answer assignment questions. I, lot, I see a lot of students that make unnecessary mistakes and even though they worked hard on their assignment, get zero for a question. So watch this video a couple of times if you have to and make sure that doesn't happen to you. I'm going to do two questions. The first question is briefly explain environmental problems that can be associated with economic growth. Now this question is just a straightforward written question no graph required. The other question, I'm going to show you what to do if a graph is also required. Now the first thing I'm going to do with this question is refer back to my MO document. I do not want students to use the internet. Please use your MO document because the internet is a big source of information and you do not always know what information is valid and what's irrelevant and what's, what, what can be used. So for instance, for this question, if you type in environmental problems associated with economic growth, you get a couple of options. The first option here is from the WWF, the Worldwide Fund for Nature. And when I asked the student the question in assignment previously, a lot of students just copied and pasted this website into the assignment. Now, first of all, it's zero because you plagiarized. Second of all, this is not the correct answer to the question. This information is not relevant. It might seem like good information, but it's um, too technical for environmental economists. This has more to do with the biology and nature rather than economics. So I would recommend that you forget about the internet and solely concentrate on your MO document and on your textbook. Anyway, this is a good learning opportunity for the exam. And if you concentrate on these two documents, you'll be better prepared for the exam already. After you've read the MO document and you're satisfied that you know the answer, remember to also refer back to your textbook and then go to answer your question. I always start my answer with a small introduction. It's like taking the reader's hand and just gradually leading them into your answer. So let's start with the introduction. There we go. That's a good introduction. I basically took the question and just stated it differently. I said economic growth is often associated with an increase in certain environmental problems. The environmental problems in my neighborhood due to economic growth will be discussed in more detail. Okay, great. That's a very good introduction. Now starts the body of your, your, your answer. And make sure this content in the body of your answer really answers the question that was asked. So let's start with, with the information. Okay, can you see that I addressed the question, I explained that there was, due to economic growth, there was some kind of environmental problem. Now this is a good body for an argument. You also see that for every point I made, I used a separate paragraph. So the rule is one concept per paragraph. So I have my introduction, then I have one, two, three, four things in how economic growth can cause environmental problems and then I just end with a conclusion. So you'll see the length of my um, of my answer is about between half a page 
and um, a full page. You can write a little bit more if you like. Uh, do not try to not write less than this. You'll see I used my own words. I've never copied from a source, copied from the textbook, copied from the MO guide. That'll get you zero because you plagiarized. Um, you'll also see that after I'm done, I read my work again to see that there's no mistakes. And I've used the spell checker on the computer. For instance, I can see this green underlined here showed that there's a mistake and they tell me there's a grammar mistake and I correct that. So my spelling is good, my grammar is good. If you don't have a spell check on your computer, please use the dictionary. And now I'm satisfied with this answer. The second question is a question that involves a graph. The question is, explain with the aid of a production possibility curve how your country could limit the production and consumption of future generations by current irresponsible consumption and production. Right. Now, again, don't use the internet. Go directly to your textbook and your MO document. So, let's go to our MO document. This question is way down in learning unit 9. So, here we go. It has to do with sustainability, and over here is a section that, that talks about um, trade-offs between the environment and economic goods and it gives me it refers me to my textbook so let's go to our textbook oh here we go there's the production possibility curve now the only way i could have known to go to my mo document over here was if i read the work before i started with the assignment and it's not wasted time, you're preparing for the exam. So make sure you read it, and then you go back to your, to your MO document, which refers you to your textbook. So I'm going to read this part over here. Then you can start with the question. So let's go back to our assignment. First of all, we're going to start with an introduction. This is a very good introduction, so I just let the reader into the question. I didn't just start with the graph. Well, the next thing is to actually draw my graph. Very important, do not copy the graph from the textbook. Um, you will get zero for that, all right? So if you make a photocopy and you just put it in, it's zero. You have to draw your own graph. If you're not able to draw a graph electronically, please draw it on a piece of paper, take a photo, and put it in or scan it in and put it into your assignment but when you draw it electronically make sure it's very neat if I can't see what's going on it's zero so for instance try not to use insert lines so I have a pencil I'm gonna just draw two graphs over here okay two axes the one is today the other one is future it's a PPC, so it's a trade-off between, let's call it economic goods and services and the environment. Same for the future, it's different, I'm just going to write goods and services and the environment. Right. Now today we have a PPC that looks something like this in the future that PPC which was over here somewhere would have just shifted in so this is PPC of today this is PPC of today just in the dotted line and this one over here is the PPC curve of the future now the whole idea of this graph is to show that We've used so much today that the future graph, a PPC curve um, shifted to leftward or decreased. Now you can also show if I produce, a, if I um, use or make goods and services uh, of amount one year, then in, the, in, in today I can have an environment quality of let's say E1, so that's good environment quality. 
for the same goods and services in the future, I cannot have environmental quality of E1, I can only have environmental quality of E2. E1 is not available anymore because it's on the PPC curve that doesn't exist anymore. So that's also important to show that my options decreased. Right, but what's very important is that you show that the most important is that after you've drawn this graph, you have to explain it as well. Now, the first part of the explanation is to tell the reader what's going on in the graph. So I'm going to do the following. Okay, can you see I've explained every single uh, line in the graph. I've explained what the um, short hands are for. I can even put it in here, showing the PPC for today. That's PPC T. Uh, you can make it a small T as well, that'd be nice. And the other is showing the future. It's PPC F for future. Let's make it a small F. Right. So I explained what every curve is. I explained what the movement was. I explained the what, what, what it means GS1 or E1. I explained it all in the, in the text, in the discussion. You can't just draw a graph. You have to draw the graph, then explain what every aspect in the graph is and what the graph means, right? Otherwise, you, get, you, you can't get marks for this because what is a graph other than something that you explain? And then at the end, you just write a short conclusion. And that's it. That's how you answer assignments.